Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today we will deep dive into a topic that keeps many cloud practitioners up at night, cloud cost optimization, especially on AWS. So are your AWS bills making your eyes water? Are you constantly wondering where all that money is going? If so, then you are in the right place. Now, cloud adoption is booming, right? Businesses of all sizes are flocking to the cloud for its agility, scalability, and innovation. But here's the dirty little secret no one talks about, your AWS costs. We are seeing a massive trend where organizations are struggling to control their cloud spending. What starts as a small manageable bill can quickly spiral out of control leading to significant budget overruns and it's a huge problem and honestly without proper optimization your cloud investment can turn into a financial black hole many companies are simply leaving money on the table often even without realizing it so how do we stop this bleeding so it all starts with understanding the fundamentals of aws cost optimization Think of it as mastering a few key principles when applied correctly can dramatically reduce your cost bill. So the first we have is right sizing instances. So imagine paying for a 10 person uh, ride when you only have two passengers. So right sizing means choosing the right instance type, the right instance size that perfectly matches your workload requirements. Now, uh, I'll show this later. Next, leveraging spot instances. So think of these as uh, AWS's spare capacity at a significantly reduced price, uh, which can go up to 90% of discount. Now, this is ideal for fault tolerant workloads like batch processing or uh, development environments. Then we have optimizing the storage capacity. So choosing the right S3 storage class based on access frequency can lead to uh, massive uh, savings. So infrequent access tiers are much cheaper for data you don't need constantly. Also lifecycle policies to archive or delete old data are crucial. Then we have reserved instances and savings plans. So Committing to consistently use for a period of one year or three years can give you a very substantial uh, discounts compared to on-demand pricing. So saving plans offer even more flexibility across instance families. Now, understanding these fundamental concepts is the first step towards a leaner cloud bill. But knowledge without action is just potential. That's why tracking and monitoring your cloud spending using tools we will discuss is absolutely vital for proactive optimization. You can't fix what you don't measure. So let's talk about some real world scenarios where you know you might uh, you can optimize. So let's say you're running a popular e-commerce website and you experience massive traffic spikes during festival seasons or flash sales. Now, continuously running a fleet of over-provisioned EC2 instances to handle these spikes year round is a huge waste of money. So how can you optimize this? So one is you can use auto scaling with dynamic scaling policies. So you can use auto scaling to automatically scale your number of instances based on real time metrics like CPU utilization or uh, request queue length P during peak times and then scale down during off peak hours like you know during late nights or during the uh, weekends when there is no traffic so for this ideally what you can do is you can set up an auto scaling group so you will create an auto scaling group and you can define your uh, sizing and scaling as to you know when do you want to scale up based on the CPU utilization or based on other metrics you can choose that and you can set it accordingly then you can use spot instances for uh, non-critical workloads. So you can identify non-customer facing components like any background processing of orders 
or recommendation engines that can utilize spot instances for cost savings without impacting the user experience uh, itself. So for this, you will basically uh, make use of your spot requests. Um, so you'll need to basically create a request and then if the if the capacity is available amazon will aws will assign it to you and then you can run your non-critical components and those spot instances then make use of caching with uh, cloud front and elastic cache so uh, basically under this you can cache any static uh, content closer to your users using uh, CloudFront, which can reduce load on your origin servers and RDS, and also lowering uh, compute uh, costs and improving the performance. Elastic Cache can be used for frequently accessed data, further, uh, can reduce the load on your database. So, uh, for this, you make use of the CloudFront service, which is your uh, CDN content delivery network. So, you can set up a, a cache mechanism. Um, and then you can start serving the um, uh, content from those cache to your user. So that way you will put less load on your original uh, servers. Next we have is right sizing based on load tests. So it's important uh, that you run load tests on your application, which will help you to accurately determine the optimal instance sizes needed for different traffic patterns. Uh, avoiding any guesswork or over provisioning of your capacity so you know try to have dummy load on your application so and you can see how your application is performing whether it is um, uh, slow whether it is fast and then you will get to know whether the instance is right sized or not uh, another scenario we can have is uh, let's say organizations leveraging data analytics um, and they are generating vast amount of data now, optimizing the processing and storage of this data is key to managing your cloud cost effectively. So how can you optimize this? So you can um, use S3 intelligent tiering. So automatically uh, move data to the most cost effective S3 storage class based on the access patterns. Infrequently accessed data will automatically move to cheaper tiers. Then you can use serverless data processing with AWS Lambda and AWS Glue. So for event driven or batch processing, uh, consider using serverless services like AWS Lambda and AWS Glue. You only pay for the compute that you consume and this will eliminate idle costs uh, which are associated with running persistent EMR cluster. So which is mainly used in your uh, data analytics then optimizing your emr clusters so if emr is necessary use spot instances for worker nodes to reduce the cost significantly implement auto scaling for your emr clusters to dynamically adjust the number of nodes based on the processing load ensure clusters are terminated prop promptly after processing is complete and then uh, you can use Redshift Spectrum for querying S3 data. So instead of loading all of your data into Redshift, use Redshift Spectrum to uh, directly query data in S3 in cost-effective storage tiers for less frequently accessed data. All right. So based on your use case, based on the application you're using, there are different different ways that you can optimize your services that can help you to reduce your cost now that we have seen the different scenarios let's talk about the concrete steps you can take so the first one we have is using aws budgets now uh, with this you can set up budgets with the cost thresholds and you can also receive alerts when your spending approaches or exceeds these limits now this will help you to stay on top of your spending proactively so for this you can basically you know create a budget so you can go to the budget service and you will basically create a budget so you can specify what is your budget how much you're okay to spend so you can click on create budget and you can start filling in the uh, details so you know you can customize it or you can use a template and is, is it a monthly budget or a, a daily coverage or daily reservation so let's say monthly 
budget you can give it a name and what is a budget so let's say thousand dollars for the sake of example and then who should be receiving the um, emails whenever the threshold has exceeded and then you can create this budget now with this you can uh, stay on top of your spending and whenever the threshold is reached you will receive a notification that way you can ensure that whether you are within the budget or you are outside the budget then we have aws cost explorer so this powerful tool allows you to visualize your aws costs and uh, you can understand your spending patterns identify your cost drivers and also forecast the future spending now regularly analyze your cost explorer reports so this is um, another service that you can use to understand your cost as to you know where you're spending and uh, what is the uh, estimate you know what is the future cost and all those things now this is for my december month that's my jan that's my feb and you can see uh, my feb was the highest for me and then i have you know monthly wise basically um, and then you can also when you hover over the uh, graph you can see you know where you have spent so uh, eks i've spent about 7.58 dollars ec2 i've spent about three dollars taxes two dollars kms is one dollar and then so on and also here you can see a detailed breakdown uh, monthly wise as well you also have the option of um, uh, seeing different different uh, reports um, but let's say you also have the forecast i think let me see so this is for the may month there should be a few more reports that um, you can uh, see yeah so here are the different reports there's some of the default reports that are available you can also see your daily cost you know on a daily basis how much are you um, spending so let's say i want to see for the last um let's say seven days just for the sake of example so you can see and then here also you'll see the um uh, 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 amount as to you know how much you're you're spending so likewise you can use this cost explorer to visualize your cost where are you spending how much are you spending what what was the spend last month what is the current spend all those um, you know reports you can get from this cost explorer then we have aws trusted advisor so um, we can leverage this trusted advisor's cost optimization checks now this will help you to identify potential saving opportunities like idle ec2 instances or underutilized ebs volumes and unassociated elastic ip addresses regularly review and then act on these recommendations and this will help you to save your cost as well so this is uh, another service that you have in uh, aws and you can use this also to optimize uh, your services to reduce your cost so let's say cost optimization and um, so you know basically this is this is available under the, uh, the so i'm in the uh, free tier this, this is not available in the free tier uh, but generally at an organization level you will have the um, uh, enterprise edition so you know you will be able to see all these things then we have optimize your ec2 so again this is where your right sizing comes in so implement right sizing use uh, spot instances for suitable workloads leverage reserved instances and savings plans based on predictable usage and then automate start and stop uh, schedules for non-production environments and regularly review your instance utilization metrics so basically uh, you know making use of your spot instances reserved instances savings plans and then whatever the instances that you are running making sure it is right sized that's how you can optimize your ec2 then optimizing your s3 bucket so choose the appropriate storage class you know whether you want to use standard or intelligent tiering or infrequent access or glacier based on your access patterns uh, implement lifecycle policies to automatically manage your data retention also reduce your cost and uh, enable s3 analytics to understand your access pattern so if you're using 
uh, S3 bucket, then uh, lifecycle policies is something that you should definitely consider using and also the storage classes. So by default, whatever the data that you upload will go to your standard uh, storage class, but then uh, you have the option of uh, changing the storage class. You know, if you want to use a different one, you can always uh, do that. By default, you, you get the standard storage class. So you can set up your lifecycle policies to automatically transition your data. And then finally, if you're using lambdas, then you can optimize your lambda functions as well. So optimize your lambda function code for uh, performance to reduce the execution time and the cost as well. Now be mindful of memory allocation as it impacts CPU allocation and pricing. Consider provisioned concurrency for latency sensitive applications with predictable traffic patterns. So there are different different ways that you can um, optimize your AWS and reduce the cost. It all comes down to your use case and how you are using the AWS services. So cloud cost optimization, optimization isn't a one time task. It's a continuous journey. The AWS landscape is constantly evolving with new services and pricing models. So staying up to date is very crucial. Regularly review your usage, analyze your cost, and look for new optimization opportunities. Schedule periodic cost optimization reviews with your team. Now, mastering cloud cost optimization makes you an invaluable asset to any cloud team. You're not just saving money, you're enabling the business to invest more in innovation and growth. In this competitive tech landscape, this skill is highly sought after. Now, we have covered a lot today but there's always more to learn uh, check out the aws cost management documentation explore aws training resources and maybe consider uh, doing some certifications uh, that focuses on uh, cost optimization i hope this video has given you a solid understanding of how to tackle cloud cost optimization in aws using real world scenarios Remember, every rupee or every dollar saved is a rupee or dollar that can be reinvested in your business. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel for more content and share it with your team. What are your biggest cost optimization challenges in AWS? Let me know in the comments section below. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.